2012. I'm here to witness a place I've been following since 2008. The real courage of the Greek anarchists fighting with cops captured the imagination of people around the world, including mine. In December of that year, a cop murdered Alex Grigoropoulos, a teenage boy who lived in Exarchia, a neighborhood home to a large anarchist population. These kids were basically hanging out on a pedestrian street in Exarchia. A, a police patrolling car drove up to them. There was a bit of a quarrel. Uh, and the police shot Alexis in cold blood, uh, killing him on the spot. And what followed was a kind of a spontaneous call for a response to this murder. People started gathering in Exarchia, and very soon thereafter, in most of central Athens, marched through uh, the biggest part of the city, uh, smashed up a lot of corporate and state targets, and they quickly kind of culminated in what was a full on anti-state and anti-capital kind of a revolt. But I didn't come here looking for riots. I wanted to find out how the Greek anarchists were organizing themselves in response to the financial crisis. I wanted to learn how neighborhoods have bypassed the state to provide services such as free meals, health care, and community self-defense. This task proved more challenging than I hoped. Few within the neighborhood assembly scene agreed to be videotaped or photographed for fear of retaliation by the police, their employers, and fascists. Yes, fascists, but we'll come back to that. During my time here, posters from the competing political parties were plastered all over the city, just days prior to an election, signaling to the world that Greek democracy was still functioning. These elections are very important because uh, it's, uh, we have the chance to uh, to change uh, the political uh, scene. We have the, um, the chance to go left. The graffiti and anarchist posters told a different story. They show Greece as a country that's in a state of civil war. This is a civil war. It already feels like a civil war. But this is not a capital C civil war. It's a, it's a small, small cap civil. Civil as in civilized, as in covered still for the, for the time being under this veil of civility. So you have a society that's still post-civil war, uh, the kind of um, dichotomies and the kind of tensions and the antagonisms from a civil war are still here, and they're re-emerging now, but for the time being, they're being covered under the civility of a, a, a country that's still just about supposed to be part of uh, the global West and aspiring to this idea of uh, glow of progress, capitalist, euphoria and uh, development and so on and so forth. Here in Greece, it's uh, the civil war syndrome, I call it, because our parents uh, lived in, a, in the civil war 1944 since 1949. And they can remember, and they have the fear that uh, when the war comes, we don't have to eat. Kelly was one of the few anarchists who agreed to appear on camera. She got involved in community organizing during the Syntagma Square occupation of May 2011. The action was inspired by the Spanish public square occupations. The same actions that inspired the North American Occupy movement. You definitely had a lot of anarchist groups and anarchist initiatives springing up and trying to play a role not of replacing the state in any way, but actually filling a void by in a different kind of way, in a way that would no longer be hierarchical or authoritarian, in a way contributing towards people's reconceptualization of their everyday life. We were gathering clothes and uh, food and uh, medicine, everything that the person needs. And it's too easy to find homeless this time in Greece. Got a bum education, double digit inflation, can't take the train to the job, there's a strike at the station. After the occupation was evicted by cops, these groups continued in some morphed into neighborhood assemblies, focusing their energy in their localities. Others, like Geli, chose to help those who have migrated here from faraway lands and search for a better life. The situation is uh, awful for the immigrants. If they have a house, in a very, very, very small house, 10 or 15 people, sometimes they don't have to eat. The most of them live in, in the streets. The government signed the Dublin II, so nobody can leave the, the country, Greece. 
Dublin II is an agreement between European Union members that states that an undocumented immigrant found in any EU country will be returned to the country where the person entered. This essentially transforms Greece into a migration dam, since most of the undocumented immigrants that come to Europe enter through here. Aid to migrants in Greece is virtually non-existent, and people are going hungry. This is the second time that Gelli's group delivers food to a community of Kurdish immigrants outside of Athens. The Kurds are a people without a state whose homelands are in Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Some of the people I met were escaping political repression due to their affiliation to the Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, an armed rebel group fighting for autonomy within the Turkish territory. We don't care about their uh, political uh, beliefs. Kurds never had the country on their own, and the most of the people who are 30 or 35 years uh, lived and were born in a war. They don't know the peace. Even though the situation in Greece has not officially been called a civil war, there's a low-intensity conflict going on in the streets. All the immigra illegal immigration out, out of my country, out of my home. Greece has a problem with uh, neo-Nazi groups such as uh, Hrisi Avgi, Golden Dawn, which uh, plans to enter the parliament and organize armed groups so that they can assault immigrants, students, workers on strike. Racists affiliated with the neo-Nazi political party Golden Dawn routinely attack immigrants, sometimes with the aid of the cops. According to a Greek daily, about half of Greece's cops voted for Golden Dawn helping it capture a handful of parliamentary seats in the May 2012 election. During a televised debate, a member of Golden Dawn assaulted a member of the Communist Party. The man was never arrested. We already know, know them for, for a very long time. What uh, happens now is that they became legal. They have been elected in the parliament, so now they are a legal party. So they can be more obvious, and in fact they, get, they will get money from the state. The following day, immigrants and thousands of their supporters took part in a rally denouncing Golden Dawn's violent attacks. But even with this large show of outrage, many people who support immigrants face real dangers and cannot count on the protection of the police. Our home is a uh quite known because there are people coming and going. We collect money and uh, clothes for the refugees, for migrants, so uh, we have a visibility in the neighborhood, I mean. So uh, we have been warned to stop our action, and uh, we had a bomb in our place at 3 o'clock in the morning. It was June 2008. The police said they cannot protect us. Anarchists have provided a counter power to this fascist menace. There has always been a, a huge level of street uh, fighting the anarchists basically trying to make sure that, they, that the Golden Dawn doesn't have a visible, organized mass presence uh, on the streets, way beyond the crisis you know, for, for many years. Uh, and this has continued and kind of even become more intense uh, after their electoral success. Anarchists have also secured public spaces for the gay community. It was the first open gay pride, the first in open place, I mean. So uh, what they, uh, they have warned people that in, in case you are going to parade, we will attack. And there was an uh, anarchist reaction, the anarchists came over, so they said, we will be by you, don't be afraid, they didn't show up. And even today they didn't show up, as you have probably seen. With about 500 undocumented immigrants entering into Greece every day, and with the economic situation showing no signs of improvement, it's safe to say that the tensions in Greece are likely to get worse. Many people on the left have put their hopes in a series of win, but with the narrow victory by New Democracy, the right-wing party, and with Golden Dawn winning 18 parliamentary seats, the false illusion of Greek democracy was shattered once again. Following the election, attacks on immigrants increased, 
and it was revealed that once again nearly 50% of Greek cops voted for Golden Dawn. But the past has not been forgotten by folks here. The Nazi occupation and brutal dictatorships of the 20th century have not been erased from people's memories. To many people here it's becoming increasingly clear that the security and well-being of their territory will not come by the power of the state and their police, but by the long-term efforts and solidarity of autonomous organizers and their communities of resistance. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. My brother's doing fast on my mother's TV. Says she watches too much, it's just not healthy. All my children in the daytime, Dallas at night, can't even see the game or the Sugar Ray fight. The bill collectors, they ring my phone and scare my wife when I'm not home. 